Good evening and welcome to Sun Middle Temple. I'm so happy that you have joined us. My name is Alba and I use she, her pronouns. This is our second June observance and as always, I'm so happy that you are here. As always, this service is recorded and will be posted on our YouTube channel. As, I, as you may know, I am still in Morocco and other countries, so this will be pre-recorded and pre-posted. So, um, I'm also recording this on a bus, so please be aware that there may be some background noise. So our first thing is we have to say is Happy Pride Month and Summer Solstice. Please remember our ongoing art contest, movie night, vote, Summer Solstice, and Summer Solstice video. We would love your participation. Keep in mind that I am gone for the entire month, so everything is pre-recorded and pre-posted except for the final observance. We are looking to restart committees and give them their assigned tasks, and I would love to have as many people contribute to this. Next month, we will be doing our Make Your Survey, so please think about any th ideas or things you want to tell me. I'm being truly honest that I want and love your feedback, so please give me your honest opinion. Uh, the surveys will be anonymous, as always. We will open today with our opening words, which will appear on the slide behind you. Feel free to listen aloud as I read the words or read them along at home. We welcome you into the light of the gods and light this flame in celebration. May its brightness symbolize our connection to the gods and the natural world. May you join us in this community of faith, cherishing love and with open hearts. Our theme this month is sacredness, and our readings today are Works and Days by Hesiod, translated by Charles Abraham Elton, De Officius by Cicero, again, translated by Walter Miller, and the Egyptian Book of the Dead, translated by Sir Le Page Renault and Professor E. Navo. So we begin with Hesiod's Works and Days. O son of Dios, labor evermore, that turn abhorrent from that hunger turn abhorrent from thy door that Ceres blessed with spiky garland crowned greet thee with love and bid thy bonds abound still on the sluggard hungry want attends the scorn of man the hate of heaven impends while he averse from labor drags his days yet greedy of on the gain of others praise even as the stingless drones devouring seas with blooded sloth the harvest of the bees love every seemly toil that so the store of foodful seasons heap thy garners floor from labor men returns of wealth behold flocks in their fields and their coffers gold from labor shalt thou with love be blessed of men and gods the slothful they detest <coughs> not toil but sloth shall ignominious me toil and the slothful man shall envy thee shall view thy growing wealth with altered sense for glory virtue walk with opulence thou like a god since labor still is found the better part shall live beloved renowned uh, if as counsel as i counsel thou thy witless mind the weak and empty as the veering wine from others coveted possessions turned to thrift compel and food by labor earned shame which our aid or injury refine shame to the needy clings of evil kind shame to low indigence declining tent bold zeal to wealth's proud pinnacle ascends but shun extorted riches old oh, far best the heaven sent wealth without reproach possessed Whoever shall mine hoarded gold command by fraudful tongue or rapacious hand, as oft betides when lucre lights the flame, as shamelessness expels him the better shame, him shall the god cast down in darkness hurled, his name, his offspring wasted from the world, the good for which he pawned his soul decay, the breath and shining bubble of a day. So then we'll move into uh, Cicero's De Officius. As for mutual helplessness, those very things which we have called innate are for the most part themselves produced by man's labors. We should not have them without the application of manual labor and skill, nor could we enjoy them without the intervention of man. And so with many other things, for without man's industry there could have been no provisions for health, no navigation, no agriculture, no ingathered or storing of fruits of the field or other kinds of produce. Then, too, there would surely be no exportation of our superfluous commodities or importation of those we lack, did not men perform these services. By the same process of reasoning, without the labor of men's hands, the stone needful for our use would not be quarried from the earth, nor would iron, copper, gold, and silver, hidden far within, be mined. And how could houses ever have been 
provided in the first place for the human race to keep out the rigors of the cold and alleviate the discomforts of heat? Or how could the ravages of the fierce tempest or of earthquake or of time upon them afterwards have been repaired? Had not been the bounds of social life taught men in their such events to look to their fellow men for help? Think of the aqueducts, canals, irrigation works, breakwaters, artificial harbors. How should we have these without the work of man? From these and many other illustrations, it is obvious that we could not in any way without the work of man's hands have received the profits and the benefits accruing from inanimate things. Finally, of what profit or service could animals be without the cooperation of man? For it was men who were the foremost in discovering what could be made of each beast, and today, if it were not for men's labor, we could neither feed them nor break them in, nor take care of them, nor yet secure the profits from them in due season. By man, too, noxious beasts are destroyed, and those that can be of use are captured. Why should I recount the multitude of arts without which, for all life, would not be worth living at all? For how would the sick be healed? What pleasures would the well enjoy? What comfort should we have if those were not so many arts to minister our wants? In all of these respects, the civilized life of man is far removed from the standard of the comforts and wants of the lower animals, and without association of men, cities could not have been built or peopled. In consequence of city life, laws and customs were established, and then came the equitable distribution of private rights and a definite social system. Upon these institutions followed a more humane spirit and consideration for others, with the result that life was better supplied with all it requires, and by giving and receiving, by mutual exchange of commodities and conveniences, we succeeded in meeting all of our wants. So then we'll move into the Egyptian Book of the Dead. Hail to thee, my father Osiris, I have come to embalm thee. Do thou embalm this flesh of mine, for I am perfect like my father Shapura, who is my image, he who does not know corruption. Come, take hold of my breath of life, lord of the breath, lofty above his equals, vivify me. Build me up, thou lord of the feeble chest. Grant me to go down into the land of eternity, as thou doest when thou art with thy father to move, he whose body never decays, he who does not know destruction. I have not done what thou hast hatest the command, is that which thy ka loveth. I have not transgressed it. I have been delivered of being thy follower, O Timu, from the rottedness which thou allowest to come over every god, every goddess, every animal, every creeping thing which is corruptible. After his soul has departed, he dies, and when it is gone down, he decays. He is all corruption. All his bones are rottedness, putrefaction, seizes his limbs and makes his bones break down. His flesh becomes a fetid liquid, his breath is stink, he becomes a multitude of worms. As for me, there are no worms. He is impotent whoever has lost the eye of Shugu among all the gods and goddesses, all birds and fishes, all snakes and worms, all animals altogether. For I cause them to crawl before me. They recognize me, and they, the fear of me prevails over them. And behold, every being is alike dead among all animals, all birds, all fishes, all snakes, all worms. Their life is like death. Let there be no food for the worms, all of them. Let them not come to me when they are born. I shall not be handed over to the destroyer in his cover, who destroys the limbs, the hidden one who causes corruption, who cuts to pieces many dead bodies, who lives from destroying. He lives who performs his commands, but I have not been delivered into his fingers. He has not prevailed upon me, for I am under thy command, Lord of the gods. Hail to thee, my father Osiris, thy limbs are lasting. Thou dost not know corruption. There are no worms with thee. Thou art not repugnant. Thou dost not stink. Thou dost not putrefy. Thou wilt not become worms. I am Shapura. My limbs are lasting forever. I do not know corruption. I do not rot. I do not putrefy. I do not become worms. I do not lose the eye of Shu. I am, I am. I live, I live. I grow, I grow. And when I shall awaken in peace, I shall not be in corruption. 
I shall not be destroyed in bandages. I shall be free of pestilence. My eye will not be corrupted. My skin will not disappear. My ear will not be deaf. My head will not be taken away from my neck. My tongue will not be torn away. My hair will not be cut off. My eyebrows shall not be shaven off. No grievous harm shall come upon me. My body is firm. It shall not be destroyed. It shall not perish in this earth. For We'll then move into Celtic fairy tales, and this one is entitled uh, Southby and the Green Isles of the Sea by John Rice. Of these islands or green spots of the floods, there are some singular superstitions. They are a bone of Twilight Teg, or the fair family, the souls of the virtuous druids, who not having been Christians cannot enter the Christian heaven, but enjoy this heaven of their own. They, however, discover a love of mischief, neither becoming happy spirits nor consistent with their original character. For they love to visit the earth, and seizing a man, inquire whether he will travel above wind, mid wind, or below wind. Above wind is a giddy and terrible passage. Below wind is the rush and break. The middle is the safe course. But the spell of security is to catch hold of the grass. For these beings have not the power to destroy a blade of grass. In their better moods, they come over and carry the Welsh in their boats. He who visits these islands imagines on his return that he has been absent only a few hours, when in truth whole centuries have passed away. If you take a turf from St. David's Graveyard Church and stand upon the seashore, you behold these islands. A man once who thus obtained sight of them immediately put to sea to find them, but they disappeared. His search was in vain. He returned, looked at them again from the enchanted turf, set sail again and failed again. The third time he took the turf into his vessel and stood upon it until he reached them. So as our theme is sacredness, we will be doing something a little different this month. I'm experimenting with a new thing, so you should all tell me if you like this. This will be a very short one, as um, I am, you know, on the bus and there is some interference, and just because this is our first experimentation with one. So, this will be our first new guided meditation. Please tell me if you like this or not, and I will see if we can incorporate it into part of the observance. I ask you all to sit, to sit and be. Be aware of your toes, of all of the floor on which they are touching and touching of each other. Then move your thoughts up to your ankles and legs. Are they stiff or sitting cross-legged on the floor? Are they changed? If they are stiff, you should stretch them as far as you can and pull them back in. Say. Then you should move up to your hips. And say, see if they can move and shift. Can you turn them? And say. say, run your thoughts up your back to your shoulders. Reach your arms out and stretch each of your fingers. And then up all the way to your arms and your shoulders. Roll your head and neck about to sense each muscle as it turns and stretches. So say, you open and close your eyes your, and your mouth and see if you can stretch each small muscle within your face. So say, send your mind back all the way down your body, checking each portion all the way down to your toes and then connect all of them together as one. We will now move into the ritual part of the observance. I'll, say I'll play the video and you can watch and do a ritual alongside or just enjoy. We leave this offering for our gods to symbolize our connection and devotion. We gift this rock to symbolize the stability of the gods in our world. We gift this water to accept the flow of our lives. We welcome life and bless our offerings with oil to share our riches.
we embrace our connection to each other and the world and celebrate our revival. We'll now do our closing words, which will appear on the slide behind you. I will say, please feel free to read them aloud alongside me or just listen. As we move out into the world, let us remember our community of faith. Uh, cherish your love and open your heart as you walk through life. Hold dear the light of the gods and our connection with the natural world. Go forth in celebration and carry the light of connection within your heart. Happy Pride Month and happy summer solstice. I will see you at our final observance. Good evening and welcome.